Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Justin Jackson. I'm professor and chair of the English department here at Hillsdale College. And I've been asked to give you words of encouragement, maybe something inspirational, motivational. Um, for the students who have had me, you know that I am not encouraging. Um, I don't inspire and I don't motivate. So I was really kind of the wrong guy to call on. But I do tell really bad jokes. And I find, for good or for ill, in times like these when we can get angry, frustrated, etc., um, I have a very apathetic disposition. Nothing really gets under my skin, nothing bothers me, and I think it's just because uh, lots of things are jokes to me. So I thought I would share some of my favorite bad jokes with you today. Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe make you laugh. Uh, uh, the first one, the first joke actually, uh, isn't my own. I didn't know it. My six-year-old daughter um, would tell this joke every day for gosh, probably three months. So here it is, and this was her favorite joke. Duck walks into a hardware store and goes up to the salesman. He goes, hey, you got any grapes? Hardware store goes, nope, don't have any grapes. Duck says, all right, thank you. Duck come back, comes back the next day, says, hey, you got any grapes? Hardware salesman goes, no, we don't have any grapes. Duck's like, thanks. Comes back in a third day, goes to the hardware salesman, goes, hey, Got any grapes? Hardware salesman just goes, listen, duck, if you come in here one more time, I'm gonna nail your beak to this floor. Duck says, all right. Duck waits a couple days, goes back into the hardware store, goes to the hardware salesman, he goes, hey, you got any nails? Hardware store salesman says, no. He goes, good, you got any grapes? <laughs> Two hunters walking in Michigan doing, I suppose, what Michigan hunters do. They're probably having a couple of beers, I don't know, talking about Bob Evans, whatever it may be. And all of a sudden, one of them just stops breathing, falls on the ground, his eyes glaze over, and his friend just panics. I mean, he, he looks like he's dead, and he calls 911. 911 says, 911, how can I help you? He goes, well, I, I think my friend's dead. What do I do? What am I supposed to do here? 911 operator says, sir, just, just calm down. I'm gonna talk you through this. Just the first thing you have to do is be calm. I says, okay, <sighs> what do I do? She says, well, the first thing we have to do is to make sure he's dead. A little bit of silence on the end of the phone. All of a sudden you hear a bang. He comes back, he goes, okay, what's next? A couple guys golfing, beautiful day, 60 degrees out, sun shining, no, no wind, just perfect conditions. On the eighth hole, guy's getting ready. He's right in his backswing. He just swings back, ready to just nail it. And all of a sudden, he sees a hearse, a funeral procession coming. I mean, he just stops mid backswing. It's really something else. And he just stops and he takes off his hat and kind of bows his head and weeps a little tear. It passes and he gets up and his buddy goes, oh, I never knew you were so kind of respectful. I, I didn't know that you, that you cared about the dead in that way. He looks at him, he goes, well, she was a good wife. Horse walks into the bar, bartender says, hey, partner, why the long face? That is, it's, my kids will tell you, that's my favorite joke. I know it's pathetic, but that's actually my favorite joke. I was walking to campus the other day, and, oh gosh, I'm going up Hall Street. And these guys are putting this new roof on this huge house, and they're just hammering away at the shingles. And one of these roofers, he starts calling me a paranoid little weirdo in Morse code. You know, women, women find me really pretty ugly until they find out how much money I make. Then they find me ugly and poor. Run into a friend the other day. I hadn't seen him since grad school. Years and years have gone by. I'm talking to him. It was great to see him. I'm like, Benjamin, how are things? He's like, great. And I, how's the family? He says, oh, fantastic. How's your son? How's your eldest boy doing? He goes, he's doing great. I'm thinking, wow, how old is he now? He's, uh, he's about 35 at this point. I was like, oh, that's great. What's he doing? He goes, you know, he is an extremely successful moil. I go, is that right? And he, I said, does he make a pretty good salary doing that? And he says, no, he just collects tips. <laughs> You're going to have to go on to Google and, and uh, look up moil. I'm, I'm afraid on that one. Guy goes to his goes to his priest and he says, Father, would it be okay if I smoked 
a cigar while I prayed. And the priest says, absolutely not. Prayer is sacred time. When you're praying, you need to just be praying. Just focus only on your prayer. He says, okay. Thank you, Father. Father, just a quick question. <clears throat> Would it be okay if I prayed while I smoked? And he says, of course, we ought to pray no matter what we're doing. Now that last one, for those of you who have seen me on campus, and you just think I sit in my corner and I'm just smoking for two hours at a time on my cigar, you now know that I'm not smoking, I'm, I'm praying. Um, thank you for bearing with me with my dumb jokes. Uh, I, I, I hope these days treat you well. And at the end of the day, uh, I guess the only inspired word I would have to give you is that at some point you're going to die anyway. So you may as well laugh at stuff and not take things too seriously. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Enjoy, enjoy your Christmas break. I look forward to seeing you all back uh, next semester while I'm praying over in the corner. Mm -hmm.